Okay, so tell us a little bit about how you came to illustrate The Perfect Wizard. Okay, that was, uh, I've worked with, with Jane on a number of books uh, over the years, and that project came through an editor asking me if I'd do it, but I'm sure it was, a, it was Jane working with that editor mm -hmm. saying, The idea of working on a on a book by Jane about about uh, Anderson was was great, you know, because of the connection that I feel that Jane has with the with the book market and the and the, the art of the book, you know, of uh, working with with somebody like Anderson just seemed to fit. You know. And um, and I always like working on a, on with Jane. She's mm -hmm. great to work with. How many books have you worked on with her? Besides her being a good friend and you know us seeing each other, other socially, it's been a great artistic sort of collaboration. So, what did you have from her first? Did you have the full manuscript when you started with this? Uh, yeah, they sent me the they sent me the manuscript and and right away I, I liked that what she had done with it, the treatment that she had done with it, and then um, I called her, knowing that she. Jane's a Jane's a collector of stuff, you know. She's a collector of stories. Uh, she's a collector of art, and uh, she's a collector of, of books and reference material. And I knew if I was going to find anything at all on Anderson, I I just ought to start with Jane. And so she had uh, she had a great deal of of um, material on Anderson, photographs of Anderson, and uh, and the the. Uh, Buildings that were associated with Anderson, the schoolhouse and the, the, the houses in the town and all that. And so I knew that I could go there. Uh, then after I uh, after I saw what what Jane had, and she loaned me a lot of a lot of her material. Um, I called the uh, the Historical Society in Solvang, California, uh, having been to Solvang a number of times and knowing that they were a that they had, they had a lot of, uh, they're probably the best uh, source for material on Denmark mm -hmm. in, the, in the country. So uh, I called the uh, Historical Society there and they uh, sent me a lot of material as well. So did you see pictures of him to get inspired of how to draw him oh, or? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of photographs of cool. him. Cool. There, there were, there, there are a great many photographs of Anderson to work from. and. Um, and the books on him, there, there's a, uh, an early biography of him that has a lot of pictures of, of where he grew up and uh, specific spots. Of mm -hmm. So I, I, uh, after that, after I got the photographs, I started piecing together what I, I worked like I always do. I break, break it down into what pictures uh, I think uh, will, will work with the text given. And Jane thinks in pictures. I'm sure she imagined the entire picture book all laid out, mm -hmm. and um, and so it, it was it was easy. It's easy to pick pick illustratable bits out of her story. You know, there, in fact, I won't say it's easy. It's hard because they're way too many. <laughs> you know, so I have to trim it and say, okay, this one. But uh, everywhere in there, you can find something to to work with. And his life was was great. You know, his life was. Whether it's the uh, the rather exaggerated life that he wrote down in his biography, right. or the real one, you know, they they were both full of, uh, of uh, good moments to illustrate. So I broke that down into what I thought would make uh, um, an interesting interesting sort of narrative, just looking at the pictures, and uh, and then I went searching for the reference that might, you know, through the all the stuff that I'd gathered. Looking through the reference to see what I could actually plug into what I had originally thought 
would make a good sort of narrative. Uh, sometimes concentrating on characters, sometimes concentrating on landscape, mm -hmm. sometimes concentrating on a specific incident that was maybe humorous, and then another one that was rather poignant or, or kind of tough. And um, so that I'd have a balance all the way through. And, um, and then I just started sketching. And um, at that point, I send my pencil, my, a, a rough pencil, into the, uh, the editor. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we kicked that around for a while. And as I remember, my first treatment was um, considerably changed. He went through it and said, let's try it this way. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a whole different sort of take on it, and he had a different idea. And uh, uh, some editors say that, and I don't agree with them at all, but he was good. And so um, I remember going back through there and changing a great deal of it. And since there was so much material to work with, it was, it was easy to do. And uh, then from there, I, I have to add bits and pieces from the sketches that I've got. Uh, I, I don't always have a, in this case, because it's historical, I didn't have, um, I didn't have every picture of Anderson in exactly the position that I wanted him. Mm -hmm. So I have stand-ins for that, and then take Anderson's features and add them to the picture so that I, I can maintain a likeness of an actual character, Anderson, and, um, but still make it an, an interesting picture based on what, what I thought the composition was. Mm -hmm. 